Hi, everybody. Sorry about the technical issues there. It's nothing to do with a big handbag and a very expensive screen. Anyway, if you've had back to back, Jane, then you're here again tonight and thank you. And why are you here? Because you guys want some Christmas tingles, sprinkles. You're the, you know who you are. You've already got your Christmas tree up and you like a early mince pie. Well, we are going to really bring Christmas to the classroom with the My Christmas Star Unit. And what I'm going to do tonight is talk through all the things we can do to get ready so that we have a wonderful, enjoyable time, but also the kids are truly engaged to the very end point and have some stunning, sparkly writing. Now, um, now you're in the family to um, get involved with the right stuff in the classroom. Uh, during the time, what I need from you guys is your full involvement. Uh, I wanna see all the kids work. Uh, I work hard to respond to as much of it as I can. And what the kids genuinely love is that every sentence stacking day, I showcase some work. So get it to me using the hashtag Mrs. C, uh, hashtag live lessons. Okay, um, why are we teaching this unit before Christmas? Because, well, few things. There's some newbies who missed feast and we want to give you a chance to train the kids up, know the process, have those kind of slick transitions, but also, for the people who love feasts and want a little bit more of it, then uh, it gives you a chance to rehearse them again. And those who were involved last time, the feedback we got from the, that sense that the kids felt kind of involved in an enormous writing community uh, and that sort of competitive edge thing they do, where they, they do rise to the occasion because they know that their work uh, is being shared across the world, in fact, um, and uh, they're in competition with everybody else. So it's a real sense of uh, them showcasing the very things that they can do. Okay, um, so who is this unit for? Anyone can get involved. Uh, we had somebody contact us today saying, could uh, children in year seven do it? Of course, it's a, it's a wonderful unit that year sevens could work uh, on to get into the Christmas spirit, but it's mainly written for uh, six-year-olds all the way up to 11-year-olds. And wherever you are uh, in the primary sector, either in the UK or further afield, get involved. Now, this will only work if we go in partnership. I'm going to work damn hard for the kids in your class, but I need you to do some preparatory work and also that teacher judgment of making it work live at the chalk face uh, with the children. You know, all those aspects where, uh, you know, you might need to differentiate or make the word bank more challenging or, or make it easier. Or as some people say, we had to just pause you, Jane, because you were going so fast at a pelt. We bought ourselves some time sometimes just adding in extra minutes. But that is all your teacher discretion stuff. Do get involved uh, on Facebook in the teacher squad. Uh, and we've already had some people asking about advice and opinions for it to run as smoothly as possible. But this video um, will be kept online uh, for a long time so you can revisit, relook, and check in, uh, you know, if you want to clarify anything before it starts. Okay, so I've already said this, but this genuinely is uh, bold and underlined. Um, what I'm going to go through tonight is the before, the things we need to do, uh, the during and the after so that we are uh, professional uh, team teaching friends and we co-support each other every step of the way. 
And we have learned a lot from Feast about how we can uh, make things clearer, more obvious. Uh, so we, we've got real high sparkly hopes for this unit. And uh, if you have ever, uh, if you felt, um, you know, if you've not found your Christmas tingle yet, we are fairly certain that this unit will get you there. Okay, now, first things first, if you want to get involved, the My Christmas Star unit is on the unit plan site, uh, janeconstantine.com. You need to get your hands on that unit because that is the detailed, formal write-up of the teaching sequence. Um, you know how much it costs uh, for annual access for an individual user and get involved uh, so that you've got, you know, the, uh, I suppose, the teacherly words um, at your disposal if you ever need to refer to them. So that's the planning and that's where you get that. Now, the plan, you will find it in the year two units. However, um, like all things, uh, this is going to be such a gorgeous global unit that we are really relying on you that you can make this come to life in your school as a whole school writing project. And I don't say that lightly. It's just such... Uh, a wonderfully engaging film that your year sixes could pick it up perfectly and with you there as the mediator you could really push and stretch them push their language up and encourage them to do more deepening of the moments and glimmering in the gaps and um I actually am really excited that more years get involved um so that is really something to think about because it'll be a lovely uh, community finish to the end of the year. So, oh yes, it is worth me saying this. Once you've downloaded that plan, do become familiar with it because as teachers, um, you know that you uh, like to uh, read planning in the bedroom that's one of your favourite hobbies. Uh, so you need that by your bedside, um, you know, to keep you entertained and give you a chance to connect with it. Okay, I am going to go through now the uh, before bit, what you need to do before. Um, and genuinely, this before stuff is uh, hopefully not too much pressure You'll be really certain about what to do uh, before we start. And um, actually, by being in our unit plan family, doing this right stuff, my Christmas star unit together, um, we might feel less exhausted, less on the edge, and we can really help each other uh, get through because what I see out there, when we work like this, the community spirit of all sorts is uh, really high. Okay, so for some of you who are already working in this way, uh, you won't have to do this, but if you're a newbie, if we've just found each other, then these are some of the things you just need to ha almost reflect around. You know, would my kids uh, be certain about this aspect? So top of the charts, number one, uh, what I need you to do before is get the children uh, familiar with the writing rainbow. Uh, you need to have the writing rainbow in your classroom and uh, essentially um, introduce the rainbow and their lenses to the children. The, this writing rainbow is what we lean on. This is our mind frame, this is our schema, this is our filing system and each one of these lenses unlocks a cabinet of words, unlocks a way of thinking about writing and what we're doing with the writing rainbow is training them hard to think deeply about writing. This, um, this 
view of writing means that we lean on this whenever we want children to craft and construct sentences. So at the top tier, we've got the ideas of writing, the five senses and feeling, action, speech and thought, the nine ideas for writing. It doesn't matter who you are, there are only nine. Then the second tier is the grammar of writing and the third tier is the techniques of writing. Now the grammar for lens captures everything in the national curriculum. Everything mentioned in the national curriculum can be filed back into these nine lenses and this bottom tier here, this is all to do with things like onomatopoeia, simile or personification and whenever we are building sentences with children, we'll be showing them very clearly through our modelling and our expectations of what we want them to do, what lens we're driving the writing through. So they don't have to be super experts at this, but I don't want this to be a shock. So um, if you've not worked in this way before, um, I suggest you take a English lesson um, and uh, drench the room in books and begin to talk about the lenses and looking for examples in reading um, and discussing what we think these things mean. Okay, so that's the writing rainbow. Now, the other thing I'd like you to do, and this is you as a teacher, not the kids, um, you uh, with your teacher brain because I know you've got other brains up there as well, but I'd like you to watch uh, from lesson two onwards uh, on my YouTube channel, The Feast uh, Super Sentence Stacker Lessons for Feast. Don't look at lesson one, because lesson one was a little bit clunky, uh, a bit shonky around the edges, and um, we learned very quickly what was working and what wasn't working. So by lesson two, uh, it sort of then set in motion the, uh, the hallmark of how we were going to work with the future we lessons. We cracked it. I don't know if we cracked it, Mr. C. I think I cracked up, but there you go. Are you, Mr. C, are you really hot in here tonight? Or is, it, or is it like I'm having a... Flush. A menopausal moment. No, it's very yeah, hot. very hot. Um, I'm really nice to live with at the moment as well. Anyway, um, so essentially, I digress. Essentially, um, on a teacher, why do I want you to watch lesson two if you've not been in our little family before? Because that will give you um, a sense of the routine, the systems, the the. I want to say speed and pelt at the same time and try to say spelt, a bit of portmanteau there. But yeah, we're, we're working at a rate of knots. But actually, um, if the kids can get the system, then uh, the productivity is high. So I have a little look at that. Um, and that is really useful. Right. The other thing I need you to do. You're going very fast. Am I? Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm going so fast, Mr. C. He's just said you're going ever so fast, with an R, fast. Um, is I've got loads to tell you. And um, I just want to go home and put me onesie on. Uh, you see, you've probably got your onesie on. Uh, and I'm just, I'm doing that thing where you just go, I just, I want to go home. Okay, I'll go slower you need to know what's going on don't you um, but I do have quite a lot I need to tell you okay before you start your unit and the unit starts on Friday and the date is Mr C on Friday hmm. the, 27th of, the 27th of November that's when it starts when it starts on the 27th of November, in that very first slither of that English lesson, what I want you to do is share a narrative map like this. You can share it on your interactive whiteboard. You can share it on your working wall. Ideally, you'll share it in both places. And 
This narrative map captures the girl's journey through the story. Now, you'll notice something on this map. We've got highs and we've got lows. Character highs and character lows. Now, what we're going to do with this map is slowly reveal the plot as we teach it. Now, what that means, um, we call this the slow reveal. Now, what Mr. C has done, as uh, he's put, I hope he's put, uh, a link in this video, which unlocks in the description, in the description below and all that jazz, um, to unlock the seven plot points that are the backbone or the stepping stones for My Christmas Star. Now, they're all in there as clean screen grabs from the short little film. But what I want you to do is reveal them slowly over time. Now, on the Friday, because we actually start with an experience day, what they're going to see is just the map. They're going to know Jasmine is the central character and we can take a little screen grab of Jasmine. I want Jasmine to be able to move through this story physically so she's just not fixed, you know, that we can able to move her. So if she's either like a PNG on your um, interactive whiteboard. I love it when I say PNG because I don't even know what they mean. PNG, boom, a JPEG, don't know. Like, move it. But essentially, uh, if it's on a working wall, it's a kind of a picture and we can move her. Uh, because what we're asking ourselves as we move Jasmine, is this a high or a low for her at certain points in the story? And that is going to enable us to load the right type of intent. Are we writing a smiley face sentence or a negative or sad face sentence. So you've got the plot points in the description. When we kick into the first sentence stacking lesson, what I will show through my teaching is the first plot point. There are seven plot points in total, which will mean seven sentence stacking lessons. So that's the lesson that you're delivering. And the today. sentence stacking lessons are the lessons that I am delivering. And I'm going to talk about more about that in a moment. So you're going to have all of these visuals. Uh, you can print them off. You're going to make a gorgeous little movable jasmine. And children will have these plot points turned over just before the sentence stacking lesson that delivers that plot point. Okay, now, have a look here. Um, these are gorgeous photographs of working walls from teachers around the country. Now, uh, this is from, this is her Facebook name. This is from B. Shaw when she was working with a, uh, Oh, on um, Black Rock, Ian. The Secret of, the secret Black, of Black Rock. The Secret could of Black Rock. Could you pinch that out so that you've just got that picture? Use your fingers to pinch out so you can see it. That's it. Just okay. So people can see. So. Okay, so this is, uh, be sure, love a, love a pun. Uh, this is um, Erin's the central character here. And B has got all of the visuals from the story and this is the at the end of all the map work but can you see here highs lows of the story and all the stuff in the vocabulary vaults and, there we do one and they one are one. revealed one at a time yes so this would be turned over that's a question mark that's turned over but when we're ready for that lesson the visual will be revealed um here's one from oh Pinch it. Pinch it, poke it. This is Rachel Amy. Uh, oh, please look at her gorgeous uh, down here. 
writing rainbow as little cup collections so when they find really good examples uh, of onomatopoeia they write it on a lollipop stick and really good examples of taste they keep them from their reading oh love that love that um and um there from the reading rainbow mr c so i'm just going to lob that back on your head absolutely useless forget it mr c if you can't hand me the right thing at the right time yeah, sorry. it's all right babe don't matter don't want to confuse anybody uh okay so have a look here at rachel Rachel is working with Little Red Reading Hood. This is a plan on the unit plan, but you can see here plot point one, plot point two. You can see the highs, the lows. Oh, Rachel, it's gorgeous. Absolute heartburst. So, you know, these and these are really good examples. You know, there's like they're, you know, question mark, turn them over when we need them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys with those examples. Right, so here's a bit of boring uh, guff, um, but we need to know about this guff, otherwise we don't know what's going on. Um, on Friday, you, not me, you are going to kick off this unit and you're going to kick it off with an experience day. In a minute, I'm going to do a quick uh, walkthrough sketch um, around the six experience days so you get a sense of how you can prepare for them but remember you can read this on your plan as well but Friday kicks it off we launch it with an experience day and that's you then they have a weekend then on the Monday I beam into your class and a bit later Mr C is going to talk about what you need technologically for this to work okay because that's the stuff I don't understand uh, but he's going to talk to you guys about how you need your room set up what sort of kit you need it's it's now fancy uh, the main thing is um, like can you speak to a technician that you can unlock YouTube for the period of time uh, that I beam into the school and teach the children you know that's what we mainly need working okay so in total the unit will last for 13 days these are the dates that will be the experience days and there are six of them and you are in charge of the experience days that's where you can make them really tailored and bespoke to the children and you can get as crazy and as zany or as like do as you're told uh, as, and anything in between. I will be teaching the seven sentence stacking days and together like a glorious team will make up the 13 taught days. The unit will finish on the 15th of December and for the majority of us, but not all, I know, that gives us another three days in school. Now, those three days, you can organise them how you want. Um, and it will give an opportunity for the children to do some independent writing. OK, we'll talk more about that in a moment. OK, so just so you know, this teaching sequence... Uh, this sort of formal printed affair, this is in your unit plan. But I've mapped across here where the dates are happening with the experience days. So starts on the 27th of November, the six experience days that you're going to be in charge of and my seven sentence stacking days where you log into YouTube and I teach the kids. Okay, Mr C. Do you have any questions? No question. I'm just going to make a point to you. Yeah. That you put down there Friday the 27th of November. It could be any day this week before your first teaching. So that's their choice. On their, it's, Can they it, hear you, Mr. Yeah, C? Yeah, that one experience. Day. Can you explain that? Yeah. 
basically, as long as you bank that experience day before I hit you on Monday the 30th of November, that's great. Okay, now we are going to step through what all the six experience days are kind of in a sketchy form so you can begin to prepare yourself. Now, I didn't realise yesterday that COVID had cancelled singing, uh, so that was a bit of a blow. However, we are still going to love Clean Bandit and Symphony. We're going to listen to it. Uh, we're going to read it like a poem. We're going to watch Clean Bandit in concert. Uh, and it's going to kickstart our experience day. And we're using that song because, not because I love Clean Bandit. You know, I don't mind Clean Bandit. But we're using that song because it's the soundtrack to Christmas Star. So it's that first introduction you know, why has the filmmaker chosen that? Um, and what we're going to do is leech from the song lyrics uh, a whole bank and there will be examples in there of musical themed language. But I want to push that a little bit further uh, and then I want them to gather, suggest, you know, big mind maps, uh, lots of collaboration, other performing instrumental musical words because words is what we care about we word hoard there because i know some of our really high attaining writers are going to have a lot of fun um, stretching uh, kind of a musical metaphor and a kind of a performance idea through this whole um, piece of writing uh, so that's going to give us a really uh, good, rich bedrock of language, so, you know, a real rich reservoir in our vault to lean on uh, continuously as we build this writing. Okay, so that's experience day one happening on the 27th of November. I don't think I can take this shirt off. I am absolutely sweating. I feel like I feel like my hair dye is going to come down my cheek in a minute. Uh, Mr. C. A tropical moment. Mr. C. Can you um, turn the heating down or open a window or both? Because yeah that's a good question. Will the lessons be available after the live stream? Uh, if you can say it which I can't. Yes of course. Yes they are. Okay. Um, experience day two. Experience day two happens on the 1st of December. I need you guys to take control of that. And this is where now, uh, this has, uh, oh, it's quite a can bathe, that's a good boy. Uh, a feeling of, um, you know, like PSHE, um, discussion and essentially, what we want to get to now is uh, children reflecting around uh, when they've been ignored by adults. And within the plan, there's a rich bank of words. Uh, some are positive, some are negative. You know, we have discussions about have adults ever ignored them? Uh, have they ever ignored others? That sort of thing. And why we shouldn't try and ignore people. Uh, unless we're deliberately choosing to, and that's another discussion again. But uh, words like rejected, lonely, forgotten, cherished, and that actually how relevant they are, we place them on the target. So if they're very relevant, um, you know, she feels lonely, they go close to her. And if they're less relevant at this moment, she feels cherished, they can almost go out of the target. So there's a, a lot of discussion there uh, through experiences, things that have happened, uh, and that kind of uh, communal conversation, working with that zone of relevance idea. Okay. Um, this uh, came in to me today on Twitter from St. Aidan's, um, who are doing lots of freeze framing of dramas of, you know, adults on their phone, uh, adults doing the washing up, um, freeze frames of adults ignoring children. And uh, the kids here at St. Aidan's uh, seem to have a rich 
bank of uh, ideas from their own life experience. Fabulous. Right. Um, experience day three, that's happening on the 3rd of December. Um, this is all about uh, grown-up jobs. I want them to explore the idea of are some jobs, um, you know, do some jobs eat adults' time more? I mean, if we interviewed um, the children of teachers, um, you know, <laughs> is, you know, do they see time at home or not? You know, we can talk about things like work-life balance and get into discussions like, um, you know, children have more time than adults, is this true? And us all knowing that time uh, is the most precious commodity of all. And actually, the time doesn't change. Uh, but who feels the most under pressure? Is it adults? Is it children? But then this other idea of exploring a whole range of common phrases around time, because this is a really crucial thing in this film, uh, because Jasmine is just trying to get her dad's attention. He works as a mobile mechanic. He's managing a lot of other mechanics as well as doing his own jobs uh, and helping people. And, um, you know, a lot of his time is taken up uh, with his work and Jasmine just wants his time. Mr. C, we might have to close that door after all because uh, of the barking dog. I know nobody else will hear it, but... I can. Well, we yes, yeah. please. Sorry. I think we'll go for the faint rather than the barking dog. Okay, so experience day four is all about talent shows because this is now preparing them. And when we do an experience day, it's really important that we see them as a chance, see them rather as a chance to stimulate writing, gather language, you know, you make the teacher decision if they need anything in their books. And in most cases, they don't need things in their books. We just need a communal space to collect language. Um, and we want them to live this. Um, so the sort of things we want to do there is, you know, uh, have a lot of fun uh, with the idea of a talent show. Uh, we can watch different auditions from Britain's Got Talent. We can rank them uh, into our class favourites. And, you know, they can be the judges. We can be the judges. We can dress up as a judge. I mean, I don't know how high you wear your trousers. But essentially, uh, it's all of that sort of um, you know, fun look at, um, you know, who are the best performers, um, who's doing better and why. So, yeah, talent show uh, day. No singing. No singing. Okay. Uh, experience day five is uh, we want, uh, just like Jasmine has uh, in the film, her gorgeous talent show poster and leaflet, we want uh, a, a lesson of a design project and, um, you know, looking into how we build that poster what would be some of the key shapes on it? Uh, you know, we'd want a uh, an alliterative um, heading. We'd want a, you know, a catchy slogan. Uh, we'd want to have a date and time and venue and other information about the acts. So sort of information stuff about what's going to happen and, uh, you know, how are you going to design that poster? So uh, I want you to think, you know, lots of hyperbole, a lot of high drama and lots of glitter. Yeah, we love a bit of glitter. Um, and your final experience day, and this is preparing kids prior to that writing, uh, because Jasmine just freezes on stage. You know, we feel her stage fright. Uh, but I want to explore that idea of fear. And you'll have children in your class who aren't afraid to be on stage. 
Um, but let's explore fears in general and uh, a whole range of different phobias. Um, you know, you might be uh, ombrophobic, uh, which means you're uh, phobic about the rain. Uh, you might be chlorophobic, uh, that's me, afraid of clowns. Or you might be uh, somniphobic, afraid of falling asleep. Now, children will love finding out about all the different phobias. Uh, and I think you, know, you could do lots of interesting kind of card sorts and guessing games about what the fear is and what the phobia is called. And then we could rank uh, the top 10 phobias in the class. And then who like Jasmine? you know, is afraid of public speaking or being on the stage, you know, and we could get to find out a little bit more. Okay, so that's the Exploring Fears Experience Day. And, and that's all of them. And what's great about this unit, actually, is there are so many Experience Days. Uh, it's a gorgeous unit before Christmas. It's not bang, 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 just writing. We've got uh, lots of opportunity to talk, take our time and live things with the children, discuss and gather language very deliberately and ideas just before we write the next plot point. Okay, that's kind of your department, the experience days. And of course, they're not back to back, they're laced in between the plot point lessons. But for the seven plot point lessons that will, will be taught in a sentence stacked way, that's where you and I go into partnership as a gorgeous little writing team. Now, every lesson that I deliver on those days will be organised into three learning chunks. And those three learning chunks will have a certain uh, sequence and process. Now, here, just so you know, when I talk about initiate, and every single learning chunk has an initiate, what I am going to do is um, introduce a learning chunk with something funky. It can't be that funky because I can't actually be in the classroom, but something funky, which might be a picture or a discussion, um, you know, something to focus their thinking. Sometimes it's a piece of music. Sometimes it's say, uh, watch a bit of the film, yeah? Once we've got all the kids engaged in the same thinking space, then I'm going to set them off to chat. Now, it really is worth ensuring that your kids know about chatting before I turn up. Because what is chatting? Chatting happens in the very first part of a learning chunk straight after the initiate and CHOT stands for kids chat and jot. Talk to somebody nearby and jot. And what I will do is put a timer, you know, on the clock for them to gather ideas and think about it. Mr. C, have you got any questions? Yes. Nice and loud then. So you, you've um, missed out. Is Abigail McDougall has asked, will the film be watched in the sentence stack in lessons? Do they need to see the film first? Important question. Make it clear. Okay, so the, I hope you heard that question. The question is, do children watch My Christmas Star before we start the unit? No. As, as part of the slow reveal, I, when I do a sentence stacking lesson, I will take a moment from the film and show it to the children so that, I don't know how long the film is, but I'm, let's guess it's three minutes, give or take. I'm going to chunk that into seven discrete slots. Now, 
when you're on experience day, um, you know, six, you, you know, you can look back at any part of the film you want. When you're on experience day, you can look back at, you know, if we've got to one minute 34, you can use anything we've watched to up until that point. But you can't breach it because not only are we slowly revealing the plot points, we're slowly revealing the watch of the film to hold them in writing moments. So that's a really good question. OK, so please don't jump the gun and show the children the film. OK. Um, I hope I haven't lost this thread here because this is actually what I'm talking about here now, chotting. So back in the room to this. When I send kids off to chart, they are going to chat and jot ideas and then I'm going to hand it to you teachers to do what I'm calling kind calling out, where you teachers will get your children to shout out ideas, no hands up, and you will write down the ideas in your classroom. What the children will do is not only shout them out kindly, that's why it's kind, as in being kind, not too shouty, you'll kill them. Um, they are also auditing and adding their list. So if something like um, excitedly suggested and they've got it, it'll get ticked off. If they haven't got it, they'll do an audit and they'll add it on. So this constant gathering on their thinking side prior to writing. OK. Now, Mr C, can you make sure that's on full screen so everyone can see the whole yeah, kit yeah. cat caboodle? This is a screen grab from the feast unit because this gives you an idea of what the children will see on that day when I'm teaching them. So I'm actually also just putting in the chat that everybody needs to click a link to lesson two of feast. Great. Great. So uh, Mr. C is putting a link to feast lesson two so you can see the layout. But what I want to show you here is uh, this is me showing the children we're on learning chunk one. Um, and what I will do with the children is get them to organise their work into thinking side. And this is a thinking side that has got three spaces three word bank spaces and every time we collect for a word bank we have something to think about we then chart we then do kind calling out every word bank goes through the motions of have a chat about it get some ideas get the ideas from your class let's put them in our vocabulary vault prior to writing so, this is me now showing you what their book's like. So, this is an example of a year two book. And you can see it's organised into three learning chunks. What I also get the children to do, a bit a stage further than this book, if I want them to collect three word banks, I actually get them to line it off like that. So those three banks of words have helped us write the first sentence. These modal verbs have helped us write our modal verb question. And these things that are read have helped us write our simile. So that is thinking side and that is writing side. Let me finish this and then I'll take that question. It's just about the layout. Yeah, this is so, about layout. Yeah, we're going to release it every evening beforehand. Yes. OK, so here is another example and we've got Black Friday. Why I mention that it's already started is we do mini writing rainbows. These can be stuck to their books like a flap and can be in a brilliant aid memoir of the lenses we're working on. Now, this is my adult layout so I'm not claiming this is kids work this is me 
This is me actually showing you how I plan for sentence stacking. Uh, this, this is a word bank for feelings. This is a word bank for dialogue. And these two word banks have led us into this sentence up here. This is how to describe the shops in a negative way, how to describe the bins in a negative way, how to describe the people in a negative way. And this is leading into here, walking through their community. They noticed empty shops, rancid bins and lonely people. But why children need all this help before is we don't want them copying our writing. They can write their own sentence that is a negative way to describe the shops, a negative way to describe the bins, a negative way to describe the people. So the hard work actually goes into uh, synonyms, families of words, families of ideas, on the thinking side, so that when they watch your model here, almost on the spine of the book, they are watching, but knowing, I'm not, I'm watching this, but I also know I've got tons of other things I can use, yeah? What this means, and I'm letting you know, my first sentence stacking lesson, which is on what date, Mr. C, it's a Monday. Uh, the, um... 30th, is it 30th of November? On Monday, the 30th of November, we need children to mark out their book like this. So they need to, this is the spine of the book. It doesn't have to be a blank like this. Obviously, it can have lines on, lines on this side as well. But they need to mark it up so that it's got two drawn on lines there to break it into learning chunk one, learning chunk two, learning chunk three, and three further lines down the middle to cut them in half because on our very first sentence stacking lesson, we're going to have two word banks that are gonna help the sentences here, Two word banks are going to help the sentences here, and two were. And I need children for slickness and transitions so that we don't lose uh, time on sort of this process stuff. I need their book laid out like that. Now, we are going to release that layout the night before. So that is Monday's first day layout. And we'll let you know as soon as we know, because sometimes you might say, why don't you know in advance? I don't know in advance because I genuinely listen to teachers going, oh, that were a bit tough. Oh, that's a bit tricky. Oh, we could have done learning chunk two faster. And that's given me a sense of what I might do, what I might change, you know, that sort of responsive stuff. So I don't know uh, until we get a sense of what's happening out there. Okay, so that is Monday's layout. Are there any questions, Mr. C? Mm, yes, so that clarifies all the things about the layout, and that's great. I was just going to show them what it, so we also put it up for the children. This is one of the feast ones. Oh, think, Mr. C, I'm going to put your mic on like that. So this is one of the feast, so we show this to the children. So basically, that is what we show to the children during their kind calling out as well. So they know what, uh, which part that they're working on. So that is released on Facebook and on Jane's Twitter the night before. We just put it up as just an image. So you can get everything ready for the following day. The uh, You will also need to... Um, uh, so if you don't go on... So I tend to put it in the teacher squad because that's where most of you guys are come from. But if, if you're not in the T-Squad, join it. Also, we um, Jane will drop it on her Twitter account. So if you're not on Twitter, it's very difficult for us to put it anywhere else. So please, if you I know if you don't use those, it's um, it's not ideal for you, but just, just try and join or follow one of them. Just keep an eye on it. Of course, you will be able to see it. You can't, you know, it's not exactly a major problem if you can't do that. You will be able to see it. I'm just gonna put you back to Jane. Okay, so when the sentence stacking lessons happen, 
children will have every plot point lesson will make a double page spread okay in the gaps of me saying right now your teacher's going to do some kind this right rewind rewind there are two places i need your help and this is where you're on your feet you're my teacher partner in crime but not crime you're my teacher partner in like the gift of amazing writing i need you to be on your feet and personalizing it to your classroom on two occasions and those occasions happen a lot um but i'll tune you in you know i'll be talking to you just as much as i'm talking to the kids um the the two places are kind calling out and modelled writing. So those are the two places I need your help. So you, like the kids, need to get a thinking side and a writing side. Now on the thinking side, when I say gather your class ideas, when Aaron says smell and uh Baljit says scent and Alice says aroma and, uh, you know, Oscar says fragrance. You're writing their ideas down. That's your class. So that is personalised to your room. I then, when we've got everything we need in our word bank, I then model. But when I model in unison with me, so this is personalised to your room, but when I model you are also capturing a model for them to refer to. Because when I teach it, because I'm not there and it's tech, my models will move off the page. So I need you to capture it in the room. I hope that makes sense. So you are the person on the thinking side who is gathering what your year twos do, or your year fours, or your fives, or your six, I don't scribing. mind. You're scribing their ideas. But when I model here, you are also modeling in unison with me. You are writing it down so that the children have a reference point always. Now, we love you, and I can't remember who you are. <laughs> Mr C had one job tonight um, and his job was to remind me who this amazing teacher is and not only is she under a gorgeous rainbow with a teacher squad t-shirt on looking fab, um, what you can see here and this is why I show you this is this is a teacher who was my partner during feast and you can see here she has on her enormous whiteboard, I hasten to have, and I love her, uh, a big whiteboard, she has sorted out thinking side and writing side. You can see she's mapped it out into two there, two there, and then three here. These are all the word banks that are helping the writing side. This is personalised to her room, and this is what I was writing, and she wrote in unison with me. They um, can you zoom in on that as well so people can actually see I know it's not very difficult as well. If they just give people a better idea. You get the idea. So it's this is that's the spine of the book, thinking side, writing side. And that replicates exactly what their books are going to look like. Okay? And she would have been brilliant on the generation game. She would have been brilliant on the generation game. Now, I've got another message as well. And it's about deepen the moment. We work at such a rate of knots, I will be very surprised if you have a lot of kids who have finished what I've asked them to do. However, there will be some children who have finished what I've asked them to do and they can see a clock ticking. So if I've asked them to write something in two minutes and they've done it in one minute, 
They've got one minute spare and I don't want them twiggling their thumbs. The children who can see the timer and they've finished and they've edited it and they're happy with it, they are allowed to deepen the moment. Now, what is deep in the moment? Deep in the moment is for your high attaining children who want to glimmer independence elements and they don't need your help. Let's say on the writing side, I've asked them to write through the lens of adverbs and adverbial phrases on the grammateer. And we've collected lots and lots of different how adverbs. Then I've modelled something and they have applied that and come up with this. Jasmine handed the talent show flyer to her dad expectantly. And that is what the child has written. But the child looks at the clock and they've got a minute left. And they're like, that was easy. I am now going to show others how I can deepen this moment. Now, deepen the moment needs to be trained on. So if you think you've got, do you know what I would do if you've got a class and you think, I've got three or four kids that I want to train to deepen the moment, okay? You might think, I want to train the whole class. Great. We don't want to put a ceiling on learning, but that's your professional judgment. Deepen the moment means they can't plot push. They have to stay on this actual moment. They can't suddenly have Jasmine whiz off her coat and do a, you know, I'm trying to think of a really hip dance act. I can only think of clean bandit. I don't know they're no dance act. Don't even start. I'm in a right mood tonight. Uh, so essentially, she's not going to do that. It's just this moment of her handing over the flyer. Yeah, that moment. Now, in that moment, uh, the children can't add more, they can't embellish, they can't have a dragon fly through the sky, they can't switch it up, they are there, but they can write more about that moment. Now, in the writing more about the moment, what we can do as a teacher is actually say, you can choose to write through any lens from the writing rainbow, and there are 27 lenses. Or you can narrow it down. And you might only narrow it down to certain things you'd know they'd know. You can deepen today if you've got time, and you must deepen with whole sentences. We deal in sentences. You can add dialogue. You can add a short sentence. You can add alliteration in a sentence. They might be the deep in the moment challenges that you think your children could cope with. So now, if they've got time and they're high attaining and you feel they'll cope and they won't make it worse, then they can move into their plot point. So they've already banked Jasmine handed the talent show flyer to her dad expectantly, they now can margin mark. And this child is like, well, I can write quite quick and I'm quite good. I'm going to deepen. They're going to tell me what they're doing with alliteration. She felt it flapping and fluttering furiously in between her fingers. Bounce it, that's brilliant. And then, miss, I've added some dialogue in there. Look, dad, can we go, she begged. No plot pushing, staying in the moment. They've actually added two sentences in. Boom. Deep in the moment needs training. But done well. This is your differentiation for life forever where children can take the schema of the writing rainbow and truly glimmer in the gaps and show others what they can do. However, if you are new to this, please just come along, enjoy the ride and actually see it as an opportunity to train the kids because we work at expectations right up there. And also don't, you know, don't 
worry if it feels really hard because you've got to tell the kids that it will be tough. It will be tough. But yeah, you'll, yeah. at you the beginning, but let me tell you, by the Wednesday hump, by that third sentence back in lesson, they've got it. We're slick. We're amazing. There's love bombs. There's Christmas snow. There's a vaccine. You know, it's just kicking off with love early mince pies and Christmas tingles. Okay, um, so what do you want to do after? After the lesson has happened, get the work to me. I'm on the lookout all the time. You know, um, I'm not marking it like the kids in my class. I can't do that, but I am loving it. Uh, any hashtags with the right hashtags will get boofed up. I'm showcasing and I'm always choosing a standout piece of writing the next lesson and the kids cotton onto that and they love that what you're going to do uh, we're going to have an electronic um sentence strip gathering because sentence strips are sold out around the country <laughs> but actually we're going to do it electronically because it's easier for us to manage as well but we want to get their writing big and bold up there how do we get it big and bold what you're going to do is when that sentence stacking lesson ends, you're going to say, right, I'm going to have Balgit's first sentence, Amy's second sentence, and Oscar's third sentence, and I'm going to stack it and, and, and place it into our class collaborative story. Cool. Mr. C, any questions, any comments about sentence stacking? Do you want to talk about sentence stacking? Because you love to, he loves talking about sentence stacking. There you go, Mr. C. Yes, I don't know what you mean by talking about. What, which bit of sentence stacking do you want me to talk about? The actual large sentence stack or? Yeah, you always say you never explain that properly. Yeah, well, sentence stacking is an evolving daily process. So with sentence stacking, your job as a, when you're building your sentence stack in your classroom is you uh, and if you if you do a search on sentence stacking Jane Considine you'll see loads of examples but the idea of sentence stacking in your class is you're building that piece of work over the course of the unit so in this particular case there's seven sentence stacking lessons um, <clears throat> so Jane's destroying everything there's seven sentence stacking lessons so you're going to end up with about 20 sentences on your wall so that's how sentence stacking works. You're taking a sentence, three sentences each day from three children randomly. Work through your register if you can. Just pop them up. If you've got any really good outstanding ones, you can send them on to Jane because I'm going to build a sentence. We did build it on the wall. I say we, but everybody's working from home here. So uh, our girls who normally write it aren't here. Ellie and Bron. So I'm going to do it on a, you know, I'm going to do it electronically so that every day we're going to share some of that sentence and we're going to show it built as well. The other thing that I'm going to speak about while I've got the camera, Jane, is I am going to um, need you to make sure that you can speak to your um, IT people in school because you've got to be able to access either YouTube because we, the, the, the lessons are done exactly like this. So you're going to access either YouTube live or it'll be on facebook as well live so there's so we we don't transmit it through any other means i'm afraid so if your school blocks your youtube or it blocks facebook or it blocks both just have a word with your administrators before monday and uh what happened uh with all the schools that did it last time was that they um they had it all unblocked it does work really well. We've done this a number of times. You put it on your whiteboard. Jane does a bit if you didn't do it already. I've put a link in here, but if you go into the playlist, which is called Live Lessons on our channel, watch some of those lessons if you get a chance, just so that you can see the makeup and the way in which Jane does it. Like she said, ignore lesson number one, but once you go past lesson number two, you'll see the format and we, we had about 100,000 children last time engaging in this. Some of them were at home, obviously, through lockdown. So we had a lot of kids in America that aren't back at school doing it. So we had um, all these different things going on, and it worked really, really well. We had people from Australasia doing it who were doing it on catch-up because we're going to leave these lessons online for a long time as well. 
So you'll, even if you don't, I know it's Christmas, but if you don't get it going, or if you're breaking up before the 18th, you can roll it on afterwards, even though it's Christmas. The story's great. Is there anything else you want me to mention, Jane, about technology or anything like that? Okay, she's having a bit of a hot flush. I'm gonna put it back on, sir. Yeah, right. Um, okay. Uh, can I just, there's a couple of comments what? here. So Denise has You've said- You've just that, took your mark, go you. on then. So Denise has said, my only worry is the time. My class are so slow at writing. Yes. They will, it's very pacey, it's very short, sharp, sharp. They will speed up. Yeah, it is pacey. But remember, if, um, you know, you can stop the clock. You can, you know, some people start a day later. Uh, which is, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I think they're going to be really slow, because then you can do a recce of it. You can watch it. You can say, ah, oh, Mm, this is what I'm going to do. We can uh, get her to talk slowly. We can pause her. We can shut her up. So um, that's your judgment. But what I, I think is sort of uh, better is if we almost have a, oh, that's a bit much Monday, so that by the time we have our second lesson, actually, the kids rise to the occasion. You'd, you'd be really surprised how... Um, People, Monday, first time we did it with Feast, everyone's like, oh no, it's just my kids. And then by Tuesday, and then by the last lesson, they're like, can you hurry up, Mrs. C? So then very quickly, we train them up. Right, um, we're also going to share this. Mr. C is going to put it everywhere. You know, I don't know where he puts it. Uh, this is independent right ideas linked to uh, year two. And my favourite, um, it's their ideas, of course. Uh, but this sort of thing is, um, you know, a nice bit down here. Dad joins a local amateur dramatics club, but doesn't have time to rehearse. He has a big Christmas part, and on, on the opening night, things don't go to plan. Uh, so uh, he's joined this local group. Uh, it's basically switching up the story where actually Dad is now on stage. You know, what is his part? What is he doing? Or what's the point? What can't he do? And how does Jasmine help him? So, but there's lots of different ideas there uh, which will help them get excited for their own bit of writing. Now, I am going to say something more about um, uh, independent writing, and it's this. When you set them off to plan their story, and in all of the unit plans, don't forget to read that A4 page about how you sequence independent. I mean, a lot of people don't read that. I know we're busy, but that is a really good document to read. It's in every single unit plan and is worth it. It's linked to all of the SDA guidance on assessment, and I don't say anything that isn't against the... Uh, the, uh, oh, what would you say? The sort of moral duties of what makes uh, independent writing have the right level of integrity, I suppose. Um, now, success criteria. These can be agreed with the children, but we don't want to overload them. But we get our success criteria from the writing rainbow. And we give them a gorgeous mix of grammar strategies, idea strategies from the fantastics, or uh, poetic techniques like alliteration or repetition for effect. If you give them five success criteria to include in their writing, what I want you to do is also give them uh, five plot points. And then what they're going to do is decide who their character is. So they might name Dad Malcolm. Yeah, he's the central character. This is Malcolm's club he joins. This is what he's supposed to be doing. Work takes over. Uh, then he's on stage. Then Jasmine helps him. But what I want the kids to do is go, right, I am going to... Uh, Jasmine helps him. That makes him feel really positive and happy. Oh, I lost my heart then. Don't matter. I'll, I'll just... I'll do this. I'll draw one like that. Um, we're, I'm going to put a really positive feeling sentence and I'm going to build that into this little part of the story. 
We are training children like this. A plot point makes a mini paragraph. So the minute we ask them to plan a five plot point story, we're actually asking them to plan a five paragraph story, even if that only has three sentences in each little chunk. But that's their challenge, okay? Uh, if you want to find out more about independent writing, you can come with me on my Write Stuff course. You can you can have me for five days charting on about how to be amazing. But, you know, I go in detail with that uh, on that course. Uh, and then finally, really, because I'm sure we've got lives to get on with. And uh, you might need to go and watch Boris and see what he'd say. Don't call him Boris, Mr. Johnson. Uh, OK, so here... Uh, finally, I wanted to say uh, this has started. It doesn't end till Sunday. Sunday midnight. Sunday midnight. If you haven't already got the gorgeous mini writing rainbows, insert link, Mr. C, or the mini wipeoffable shadeometers, they are excellent tools. For the children to have as aid memoirs, write onables during the sessions. Um, and other than that, um, I'm going to find some ice to put down my back. And um, I think that's about it. Unless Sorry. there's any burning questions, Mr. C. Um, there were a few questions earlier, but you wouldn't have any talk, so I can't quite remember what they are. Um, moody, moody git. Do you hear uh, that? You wouldn't let me talk, moody. Oh, he's supposed to have his new screen uh, today. It didn't arrive. Do you know what I mean? I don't, get over it. Get over it. That's why, um, yeah. This is why it's all messing up. Because it's screen. all messing up because of his screen. Jude, Jude thinks that you should be the Prime Minister. She said, uh, this was a gazillion times more coherent than tonight's bubbling briefing. <laughs> <laughs> don't start talking about politics, Jude. You know he, he loves to be facilitated in that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> And he has been banned on Twitter. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to leave it there. I wash my hands. He gets a little bit over involved. Okay, uh, Mr. C, I'm going to hand to you because you might have some final messages for people. Put right. your mind on because. Okay, so, off. so uh, if you've got any real burning, so the, the main points to remember are this re watch this video if you can. You can fast forward all of a waffle and get to the important bits. Get yourself the unit plans if you haven't already. This unit plan is in year two. On that, it will have everything you need. So it's got all the sentence breakdowns. Jane's gonna adjust some of those possibly, but essentially it's all there. It also talks about the lenses that you need so that you can prepare the lenses the night before so that you've got them ready to use on your board. So just you the small writing rainbow symbols, the large writing rainbow symbols, whatever you're using. Get your YouTube um, clearances because that's how we're going to be doing it. And also if you're not able, so this, this was, Jane will start a live lessons at 10.30 every morning on the dot. It's very fast paced. You're, you, if you haven't done it before, your children are gonna be a little bit flabbergasted, but they will improve. And by the end of this, they'll be really quick and get, really getting on with it. But it's going to be helpful if you watch one or two of Jane's previous lessons that are in our playlist that says live lessons and they're the feast unit that she did. So do watch them and then you will have a really good understanding of where she is. There's nothing else that we can talk about, Jane, I don't think. Hopefully by the time you do your Sunday session on Sunday night, which is the first one for the reading, my new screen will be here. But it's not here yet. It was meant to be on Saturday and it's not done it yet. Because if you was on last night, you'd known that Jane smashed my other screen. But I'm not going to go on about that now. Jane, I'm going to put it back to you, say goodbye, and then we're going to thank everybody for sticking it out. And some of you jumped off before Johnson finished his speech. So anyway, I'm going to put it back to Jane. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, it's been hot, but hopefully I will see you. Actually, the next time I'll see you is on Sunday when we're looking at reading. We don't want to leave reading too far away. Reading helps writing, of course. And um, other than that, that's us. So uh, go forth, enjoy the rest of your Monday and hit me up on Friday with all of your images and pictures of 
children loving clean bandit. Surely we could do some sort of chair sort of routines. Anyway, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.